manage the the, the session or <laughs> yes. Yes. because uh, all the magic group is your idea. <laughs> Yes, of course. Um, so like maybe one or two more minutes, but then the next session is going to be um, some students and some, some postdocs and some experts just such as Julia talking about topics that we think that could be really magical and improve uh, a lesson that could be really useful, for example, in schools and maybe motivate students, just as we said before, giving, giving some frame to students why mathematics or why something is really important and how it can be fun and how it can be used um, beyond just a sheet of paper and, and just calculating something just for calculating some, something. So we created a shared uh, presentation um, and Julia, are you going to share the present? Okay. So then Julia is going to, to share the com uh, co connected presentation and all of us, we have a part in this. And I hope you have as much fun as we had creating this. Thank you, Eva. Um, then I'm going to start. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Julia. I'm working uh, at GeoGebra in the head office at the JKU. Um, there I'm leading the GeoGebra community team. So together with my team, I take care of for creating tutorials and keep them up to date if there are some new features. We take care of the support of our users and we work closely with the community. Uh, today, I'm going to share uh, with you uh, the news about the new GeoGebra calculator suite. So we released uh, this app in the beginning of this year. And I will also show you the brand new design of all GeoGebra apps that's not uh, released yet. So that's a quick uh, sneak peek what's coming in the next weeks. So the GeoGebra calculator suite uh, is a special app because it combines um, most of our existing apps. So may you know our graphing calculator or 3D calculator, the geometry app and the CAS app. And all these great apps are now combined in the GeoGebra calculator suite. So students are now able to just use one app and they can switch in the app between these uh, different sub apps. But I will show you in a minute how that looks like. Um, the GeoGebra calculator sweep uh, is free like all GeoGebra apps and it's available for web, for Android and for iOS. Um, so you now can also finally use all apps together uh, in one app on the mobile devices before it was possible with the classic app because there you also have the different perspectives but the classic app was not able to be used on the mobile devices but now it, that is also possible with the suite app. And you will also find in our presentation a link to the tutorial where you can find more detailed instructions how to use the app. Before I show the app to you, I will also uh, show you a quick um, overview of all our apps. May you are wondering why we are offering so many different apps, but the answer is easy. GeoGebra is used worldwide and every, nearly every country, sometimes also some regions in a country have def dif different rules, uh, what is allowed to use in exams and what is allowed to use in schools. And as we want to support as many teachers and students as possible, we created lots of different apps so that every teacher can choose the app which feeds the needs uh, of uh, his or her and her students. So you can see here uh, this uh, table, you will find it also in the tutorial. So maybe that's helpful for you if you uh, want to decide which app should be used for you in school. And you can also see here the suite app. You can see that the suite app uh, has almost all the functionalities like you also know from classic. There's still the probability calculator and the spreadsheets few missing, but our team is working on that. And uh, we are going to provide this views all also during the next school year. All other functionalities are already available in the Suite app. And now I'm going to show you how this app looks like. 
So you can see here uh, the screen of my mobile phone uh, in the new apps design. So if you know the YouTube apps well, you may be uh, recognized here that it's now looking a bit different. We have now here uh, the different tabs at the bottom, so that's easier to navigate. And it's also possible to change the, uh, the size of the graphics view. So if you want to show the graphics view, or maybe you would like to have a larger tools view, you are now able to expand this views. That's maybe also uh, useful if you have lots of objects in the algebra view and you want to have a bigger algebra view, uh, you can now choose if the uh, algebra view, the tools view or the table view should be full screen, half screen, or if it should be hidden. So uh, that's the main part of our new app design. And now I will show you the different functionalities of the suite app. So we are now here in the graphing calculator perspective. You can see here, you could use commands in the algebra view, or for example, I could add a function. If I add this function, I can see that I uh, automatically get sliders to uh, change the value of A and B. So that's typically for the graphics view. So for example, here I could uh, investigate uh, functions. Then maybe now I want to switch to another view. Maybe I'm in an exam and I want now to work on a CAS example. I can just click on the menu and then I will find switch calculator. If I click here, I can choose another app. So I now, for example, can use the CAS app. In the CAS app, I could, uh, for example, here, I um, already created something. I could, for example, work with integrals and derivatives. I could also do symbolic calculations. So um, if I'm doing something in the CAS perspective, and for example, I'm going now back to the graphing perspective, everything is saved what I did before. So I can choose between the perspectives and everything is saved between. For example, I could also switch to the geometry app. You can see here, now I have the geometry tools and also the algebra views. So I could hear, do here some uh, geometric constructions. And the last view, which is also contained in this app, is the 3D calculator. So when I click on the 3D calculator, um, I also prepared here a cube. I can use all the 3D tools and I even could use the augmented reality mode. So I'm also able to use augmented reality within the uh, GeoGebra calculator suite. So you have all the power which you have in the single apps and you may know them, you have now them combined in the GeoGebra calculator suite. And also here, I can go back to switch to any other calculator. So now before the students had to leave the app and to choose another calculator, now everything is possible in one app. And um, the benefit is also if you're using it in exams. So GeoGebra also provides an exam mode. I will start that quickly. So I have first to go to flight mode so that there is no connection. And I can start the exam. So you can see the exam has started. Uh, the header is turned uh, green and also a timer is running and I will I now also have here the switch calculator feature. So in an exam, I can choose in which perspective I want to work. So I could switch to CAS, to a CAS example. I could switch back to graphing. So uh, it's now possible to use all the apps, even in exams on mobile apps. If I'm done with the exam, I click exit exam. And now I get the protocol uh, with the start time and the end time so that the teacher sees that I was all the time uh, in exam mode and I was not cheating. Yeah, that was a quick introduction of the new uh, functionalities of the GeoGebra calculator suite. Of course, you can do much more than I showed uh, now. So you can have a look at our tutorial. There we also have some 
examples um, if you are interested and want to know more about it. If you have any questions in the future or any ideas or any wishes for maybe some future improvements, uh, you're always welcome to contact us. So um, you can reach us under this email address. My team is taking care of all the emails. So if you have any problems or if you find any bugs, please let us know. Uh, we are happy to hear from you so that we can fix bugs or uh, discuss further wishes. Yeah, and if you want to stay tuned and want to get updates if we create new features, if there's something new on our website or if there are new features in the apps, here in our presentation is also a link and you can also sign up here for our newsletter. So if you want to that we keep you up to date, uh, feel free to sign up so that you don't miss new information. Yes, that was a quick introduction of the GeoGebra 3D uh, uh, <laughs> Suite Calculator and also a quick sneak peek of the new apps design. Yeah, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer some. Yeah, I already know which of the apps I'm going to use. <laughs> <laughs> and Irina has a question. She sure. wonders, um, Irina wonders whether the GeoGebra suit is the equi equivalent to the GeoGebra classic mode on the mobile device and is this correct? That's our goal. So our goal is that the GeoGebra uh, suite calculator will contain all the functionalities that you know, now know from the classic app. So suite should be the successor of the good old classic app. Mm -hmm. And Irina wonders whether you can post this um, link into the chat so she can mm -hmm. use it right away. Sure, I will post and, uh, all the information. Also, also, if you can uh, post this uh, help file or what, uh, the, the tutorial mm -hmm. file as well, because uh, I think then that will be great. Mm -hmm. I will do that. Mm -hmm. OK, thank so, you very much. This is amazing. Mm -hmm. So our team is uh, working very closely with the GeoGebra team. So it's very good to have them about 10 meters away. And uh, I think uh, many of the of the, and, uh, the PhD students and the research group is, uh, is working together with GeoGebra. So our research also uh, be able to contribute to the, to the development of GeoGebra. And then that's why we would like to have contributions from all of you. That's how we could uh, provide uh, the, the needs of the teachers and the, the students, both for the, the GeoGebra team and then also doing some additional research as well. So. I think uh, Vincent has uh, some questions. Yes. Or comments. Should I speak? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, my my question to uh, Julia. Um, I came across uh, some teachers. Um, that they were designing the applets, right? But I I think they also have the same idea that uh, it's only good to design using the desktop version because um, it's quite hard to design using the the mobile version. They're very quite limited. Yeah. I also think that's easier maybe for creating applets to use the desktop version because you have a bigger screen and it's easier with saving, but it would be possible with the mobile apps too, but I think it's easier with the web version. So can we say that uh, the desktop app is there to stay for a long time? And uh, um, but, uh, yeah, It will stay, and, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, so and, 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 uh, we will support it in the future too. Well, and can I say that some of the uh, whatever features, right? Uh, I mean, the interactive, the design for interactive features, um, whatever you put inside the mobile, uh, it should start in the desktop first. Or will, will they, you know, will they like grow apart and then we somehow, some point of time, we have to jump over? You know, I, I mean, it's got to start there until the day you can, until the day mobile catches up, then, then we can drop off the desktop. Yeah. Yeah, it shouldn't. It doesn't matter if you design it on the desktop, on the mobile. If you design it in a new version, in an older version, so the file is working in all the apps. So oh, there will also I be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. there was a time when uh, the position of some of the elements right were different when you open up. Yeah, if you design a mobile and a desktop, but I think the problem is more or less 
as far as I can remember, uh, you know, try once or twice, they are in the same position. So you don't have too much uh, adjustments to make if you open it up in a mobile. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah, of the screen size, position. it's maybe a yeah, bit different yeah. if you open it on a mobile device. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah that's all. Thanks. <laughs> And uh, maybe, maybe I just need, need to introduce Vincent because uh, he is our GeoGebra hero in Asia, <laughs> one of the GeoGebra heroes. No, 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 no. <laughs> we, yeah, we, no. have, we have given many workshops in, in Bangkok and in Taiwan, and uh, he is all, all, always uh, active in our community for, for many, many years. So thank you, Vincent, and uh, very glad that you are here, and then hopefully we will see you here too, so thank you very much. And our next speaker is um, Adinro. And if I can share my screen, then you can see the slide introducing him. I hope you can see my screen now. It's not flickering, so that's a good sign. Oh, it is flickering. So maybe, Julia, you will have to turn on your presentation again. <laughs> Because, ah, perhaps, no, sharing is not working for me right now. Should I share? Please. So we always have uh, transition slides to our next speaker. And our next speaker is going to be Adi Mur. And um, he is from Indonesia and he already he received his doctoral degree. So he is like what we all want to become. <laughs> and he did that at the Goethe University, uh, University at Frankfurt. And um, he's working a lot with math city maps also in, in Indonesia. And he's going to tell us about how to get mathematics out of the classroom and still teach about it. So um, I think, Julia, you need to stop now and Arinur maybe needs to start now with his presentation. And I'm going to restart and be right back. Thank you, Eva. Uh, Adi, uh, Adinur, are you here? Can you start your uh, presentation? We don't hear you very well. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Now it's yes. good. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Back, uh, back, back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Charles, Eva, and also Julia. And I would like to share my screen. And yeah, uh, uh, this is an interesting uh, GeoGebra development. Thank you, Julia, for the information. And now I am continuing it uh, with the uh, questions. Uh, what if GeoGebra meet Mad City Maps? Yeah, I think this is uh, uh, interesting for us that this is the, we talk about the modeling with the dynamic mathematics software. In this uh, case, it's about uh, GeoGebra and also uh, we try to combine with uh, Mad City Maps, uh, uh, as uh, Eva said. And then the, I'm going to start with uh, uh, the Mad City Map. This is a project of the, uh, 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 yeah, this is a project by Matthias and the team from Frankfurt that it combines the idea of the materials with the use of uh, mobile technology. And I joined this uh, team since uh, 2013. So, yeah. The projects uh, in this project, the students uh, use uh, smartphone applications to access the material map that, uh, that uh, contains about uh, five to six uh, tasks in uh, locations and then uh, students in group block uh, for uh, locations, and then they will encounter a mathematical problem related uh, uh, locations or object that uh, uh, at that locations, and then uh, by measuring, calculating, and other mathematical uh, activity, they solve the problem on site. And then uh, if they have no ideas, and then uh, the app will provide uh, some hints, and the apps will also provide the feedback and alternative uh, solutions. And this is uh, some of the concept of the Mad City Map. And then uh, we have also some of the activities in 
uh, Indonesia, uh, teachers and students carry out the uh, match city map activities at tourist attractions and uh, city parks, for example, and also in historical museum and uh, others. And uh, the results show that the, the match city map had a positive uh, impact on the students' motivation and performance. Yeah, this is uh, some of the information about the uh, uh, match city maps, uh, especially in Indonesia. And we have some of the uh, results of the research. And now the, the projects continues and getting teachers to practice and create their own material for their students. Uh, we are uh, conducting some of the teachers' trainings in Indonesia. And then uh, this is some of the activities uh, in our uh, community. And then uh, we have uh, pay, att uh, pay attention uh, to the current uh, technology uh, trends and then the mobile materials can be further developed with the support of augmented reality and 3D printing technology. And augmented reality feature is helping for the students as a tool that uh, bridges the gap uh, between the real world situations and uh, the mathematical concept in problem solving following the the mathematical modeling uh, cycles. Yeah, this is also some of the, the uh, result of our study in uh, this uh, project related with uh, how to use the augmented reality in math, uh, math city maps. And then for the next, in the math city maps, this is learned mathematical modeling, by tracing the mathematical paths that have been created by their teachers and some parts of the modeling cycle students might use uh, digital simulations and then uh, to explore the impact of the change variables in the system or environment. So uh, GeoGebra can play an important role in this uh, process. So I think this is the uh, who uh, to combining with uh, GeoGebra in the Mad City Map. I think this will be nice to join some of the projects in this uh, case. And then, uh, yeah. And then uh, we can uh, continue that, yeah, GeoGebra with this uh, augmented reality features can help students analyze or visualize and real objects found in Mad City Map trials and uh, into the digital mathematical objects. So that yeah, the, are you going to need? Uh, okay. Okay. So the yeah uh, the objects so that the problem are easy to solve with the help of the technology. And then in other case, the GeoGebra also can be used in Math City Map in distance learning setting. For example, I know well about the, the situations in uh, Frankfurt. There is uh, the Bockenheimer Water in your campus, and then. Uh, I think it will be interesting that they can uh, get in contact between the Germany or Austria in uh, and Indonesia with this uh, technology and then real object related with the problem in one place are transferred to the user via Match City Map portal and then with the help of GeoGebra to become a 3D model which can then be uh, 3D print into artificial real objects. For example, we have the Borobudur in Indonesia and uh, we can uh, use the augmented reality feature in the GeoGebra to uh, create the, the models and then we can uh, send by using the mobile apps, uh, uh, but the Match City Map apps into the other place. For example, Shirin in uh, Egypt can uh, get the, the, the objects and then they can, uh, she can, uh, she can uh, print it out into and then they can solve the problem. So this is uh, 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 in the distance learning uh, settings. And also perhaps this is not only about the architectures, but also about the public transport in Indonesia, for example, we can share the experience and also the task to the other uh, uh, countries. And also uh, Syrian, for example, in Egypt, we can also send the mathematical tasks related with the uh, Mass City Map, for example, into Indonesian uh, students and also the teachers. So they will learn about the mathematical modeling and the use of the digital tools in this, uh, this uh, uh, activities. And of course, uh, this is also in 
uh, this open for the collaboration for you if you have the, any uh, comment and also if you are interested with this uh, uh, project we can uh, do some of the discussions okay i think this is a uh, who to combining with the GeoGebra and also the, the Met city map uh, activities and then for the next uh, about the the architectures and the cultures i think this is the uh, the series uh, exercise that combining the culture history architecture to mathematics education in a few fashionable theme practice context will be explained in the uh, in detail by students LBTV in uh, Egypt and this is a current page study uh, at the TKU uh, in the STEM education. I think this is uh, my uh, presentation about the, the how to uh, use the GeoGebra in the Met City Map uh, projects. Uh, thank you, Eva, and also the team. Thank you very much. And I think Vincent already has a request. He would like you to um, send the link to Math City Maps. So the Math yeah. City Maps can be linked to GeoGebra, which I find a really oh. interesting and funny thing. So I think Met City Maps is a, is a really good tool. And then we are planning to integrate much more with, with GeoGebra. So we have some new plans. And Adinur hopefully will join us. And then I think then there will be lots of opportunities to, to do it. But I think uh, then there is uh, lots of opportunities for everyone to, to contribute and then create maps. And if you need uh, some publications about it, we, we just wrote many papers. So for example, in Luxembourg, Ben, uh, our also PhD student, and then uh, I'm sure Adinur has uh, some really good uh, Mad City map. Uh, publications too. And I will share also about the, the some of the trials that we create in the Met City Map uh, portals, combining with the uh, uh, how to use the some feature of the GeoGebra. I think I will share some of the examples. Okay, so thank you, Adinor, and thank you all. Can you hear me well? Mm -hmm. Okay. So today's topic is an architectural modeling approach on a cultural basis. So, um, so the idea is to provide teachers with a cookbook so that they can uh, cook many meals with many recipes and um, combining different ingredients in this cookbook. Uh, the ingredients could be architectural models or, or various technologies that they can use in the classroom, which I bet would like to taste. So to come up, the idea is to come up with new STEAM uh, practices and ideas to combine architecture, culture, history to mathematics education. So this is the goal of the project. And uh, to allow teachers to tell a story while in, uh, encapsulating on the students' mathematical knowledge from real uh, life problems and things that they can see each day around them when they walk to school or to their houses. And the technologies we would like to use and visualization uh, models can be physical or digital. So we would like to use both. And uh, the architectural models that we are referring to can be anything, can be ancient architectures, modern architectures, or um, architectures that they want to invent or a free choice or based on mathematical concepts and basis that the teacher wants to practice with their students in the classroom. Uh, we are leaving the architectural choice open because we want to capture and reflect on the choice itself of the architectures because this would tell us a lot about the cultural choices from the teacher's side and the students. Uh, the idea then evolved because of COVID and we, we are now um, implementing it in a more of an international fashion. Uh, to any teacher who's interested in the idea, regardless of their time and place, can encapsulate and can use these practices. So it's more open than one country and one culture. And in order to aid the teachers and actually to implement all these notions and ideas in one practice, 
For that, we implemented the dynamic lesson plan, uh, which is a web interface uh, that the teachers can use. And it has four sides where the teacher can rotate and can choose the, the modules to, to put in the lesson in order to have these practices done. So the first thing the teacher has to do is to uh, choose the age of the students. And this is very important because it would um, contribute in the mathematical knowledge they already know, and it would contribute to the architectural choice. Then the teacher rotates this dynamic lesson plan further and chooses the architectural model. As we said, it can be uh, modern, it can be ancient, it can be inventing their own or based on mathematical concepts, like for example, symmetry in the Taj Mahal in India, or for example, the Twin Towers uh, in Malaysia. The third module after rotating the dynamic lesson plan further is defining the environment. So for example, it can, these practices can take place if the teacher wants to practice them in the classroom, outdoor, online, or in a museum. And from that, we are also eager to capture these reflections further uh, on how the, in, the environment contributes in the architectural choices. Afterwards, then how can these be done? So uh, using various technologies from digital to physical, from digital example, uh, for example, the GeoGebra 2D, 3D, AR, VR, 3D scanning, and the physical could be 3D printing, origami, or 4D frames. So basically the dynamic lesson plan answers the four questions, which is uh, who will model, what will be modeled, where it will be modeled, and how it will be modeled. Afterwards, the, this, uh, the tool provides the teacher with uh, instantly uh, real-time links for uh, ready-made implemented uh, instructions and examples uh, on the, in the GeoGebra book that they can take forward and practice in the classrooms directly. So they don't have to think about each module and how will they do it, but rather use this tool in order to help them and aid them do these practices. So let's have a look on the research. Uh, the research will be uh, implemented in a design-based research uh, methodology where we are doing a cyclic form in order to uh, capture all the reflections and variables uh, that, we have, uh, that we have said earlier, and uh, in order to contribute to the theory and enhance the cycles for further ones. And the research questions are, this is the main one, which is we want to see how the teachers perceive the dynamic lesson planning, how would they use it in the chosen environment, while choosing from various technologies to achieve the utmost goal, which is the 3D transformation to architectural modeling. The two sub questions, one is, um, is, is questioning the, the, the architectural choice, which is, has to do with the cultural perspective. The second one is that the teacher, um, how would she encapsulate and use the technologies to emphasize and to use the students' mathematical knowledge they already know. Um, on another level, the methods that we will be using in the the methods that we will be using in the in the research is our primary focus is the teacher, and for that we would like to collect the data by using semi-structured interview if it's on a one-to-one -one intervention, and if it's on one-to-many intervention, that we then we would be using questionnaires inside the GeoGebra classroom. The students for us is of a secondary focus if the teacher gives us and uh, allows us to interact with the students and gives us their data, then we would be able to analyze them further in a quantitative way in order to analyze the architectural models they con constructed and how did they approach them mathematically. So this is the from the research perspective. Now I will show you some examples of the piloting stage and the interventions. So for the piloting stage, this is the obsolete from ancient Egyptian architecture, where it can be modeled using 2D and 3D in GeoGebra. Then it can be visualized further in a, in a digital way using augmented reality, and then visualized further using 3D printed as a physical form. This is very easy for the students as a first start because it's very easy to just uh, draw very simple polygons, extrude them in many forms to have this uh, architectural model constructed. Another uh, example uh, we did in the piloting stage, which is the Saqqara Step Pyramid in Egypt. And this is how it's modeled in, in GeoGebra 2D and then in 3D. Uh, then an eight-year-old student uh, who's very passionate about origami took the idea and did the sketch on his own and did the origami on his own. 
Another five-year-old was inspired and he did his own, he actually used his own visualization tool, which is the building blocks to visualize the Saqqara step pyramid, which is a very good tool for kindergarten level, which we can actually use as well. And then the augmented reality of the Saqqara pyramid and the 3D print were also visualized as technological um, uh, choices. Now, moving to the first intervention we have been doing, which is in Upper Austria with a design teacher and 23 uh, students. Uh, the teacher went through the dynamic lesson plan and chose the criteria, and she chose this model to be implemented in, in the workshop. So uh, this is a Kanuntum. It's uh, located in Upper Austria, and it's from the Roman Empire. And we, before we implemented this with the students in the workshop, we took it and we started to talk about it from the historical point of view. And we started to gather some facts about it. And this is the connection point where we say we connect architecture to history, culture, and to mathematics. And then we took it further in the, in the GeoGebra and started to construct it step by step. And because it's, uh, it's a, uh, the, the ruins are not completed and in reality, they were constructed using glass. So that's why we decided to make this part as an opaque and the rest of it in transparent form because this is how it was actually, re actually reconstructed in reality. Then we showed them the augmented reality uh, of it. And this is part of some of the students' work from this workshop. Uh, their, their age is um, from 15 to 16 years old. And the, the teacher at that time gave them the freedom of choice, whatever architecture model they want to represent, they can do. So some of them, as you can see here, chose the Ibiza Tower, the Big Ben. Uh, some chose from the ancient Egyptian architectures and, others, and other students chose some uh, modern architectures. Another example connecting to culture is a workshop we did in Indonesia to about 45 mathematics teachers. And for that, we used an ancient uh, building, a house from the ancient, uh, ancient Indonesian uh, style. And we started to model it in GeoGebra in the 2D and in the 3D form, extrude it and so on. And then we showed it in uh, augmented reality. And this is uh, some pictures from the teacher's work after uh, the workshop where, where they did in the GeoGebra classroom. So this is a museum that was done with an Indonesian teacher. These are some of the houses on the Indonesian style and some temples. Uh, another workshop we did in the MENA region in the Middle East uh, with, some, uh, with some teachers, mathematics teachers, but from different countries in the Middle East. For that, we chose the Hatshepsut temple in ancient Egypt, which is very famous, but it's very complex. But that's really interesting because it, uh, it allowed us to use with the teachers some sequences and some coding in order to construct all these columns instead of constructing it one by one, of course. So this is um, a nice example. Another one is from Dubai. Uh, we also did in the same workshop in the Middle East. So it's from uh, Burj Al Arab in Dubai and we imported the site map with the top view, front view and the side view of the building. And then we started to construct it in the 2D and in the 3D and show them in the augmented reality. So this is basically the idea of whenever we approach a certain uh, country or culture, we try to encapsulate or use what they have so that they can reflect more on the idea and try to use it in the classrooms with their students. So um, then I would like to pave the road for Ava, our 3D printing expert. And as Yulia and I came up with this, uh, with this slogan a couple of months ago, we wish the world had more of Ava's. So um, thank you. And if you have any questions, please. Thank you, Shirin. I think there are um, questions, actually. I believe I found one. Uh, yes, Petra says that she thinks that's really smart to having um, the approaches combined and using the best of all the approaches and having a dynamic lesson plan. She really, really likes that. Thank you, Petra. And Irina wants to know about the age of the students. Um, um, do you yes. read this? Yeah, I can. Uh, so for the piloting, for example, we did it with an eight-year-old student. 
But for the actual interventions, the mathematical models I have shown you now, they were from 15 to 16 years old in the upper Austria. And the rest were done uh, by, uh, by teachers, mathematics teachers. So there were others. Yeah, but this looks really still really complex for, for students. So yeah, I'm really managed... amazed about their work. Yeah, I was amazed too, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it must have. They were very smart. Great. You're the smart one. You you get you give everybody so interesting ideas. I know that the, they learned a lot of mathematics during the the process of of creating this, and yeah. I think it was amazing for them. Mm -hmm. Irina has another question. Part of regular curriculum. No, it was an extra project, but I discussed with the teachers uh, on a. Uh, on a pre-yearly, um, how can we use the mathematics that they already teach, but in a different way? So they were interested on in using, um, and actually I gave the teachers the, the freedom of choice. So if they want to encapsulate and use a certain concept, mathematical concept, like for example, symmetry, uh, for example, one of the teachers was um, practicing the conjunctures, which is like two objects, they're the same. So it didn't matter what kind of object the, the students do, but they have to be like two similar ones that they, they understand the concept. So there's a lot of mathematical concepts that they can use, and it depends on the teacher what she wants to use and wants to actually add in her lesson and how to use these practices. Yeah, I think this is really motivating for, for everybody participating. Okay, Eva. Thank you very much. Now I will try. And the floor is yours, Eva. Ah. Um, and Adimo has, has a link for Vincent. I will try to, like I said before, we will try to co um, collect all these informations and put them up to GeoGebra. Mm -hmm. So you can see all of this later on. Hopefully sharing the screen works now. Meanwhile, um, the thing is, about the, the, the Evas. Actually, I think we need more, more musketeers. You know, um, Julia, Shirin, and I, we call ourselves the three musketeers working on ideas how to make math more exciting and interesting and, and more, more fun for everybody. And I believe that we try to do a good job. And all of us here in the conference, we are all musketeers, actually. So we all are part of this. So we don't need more EVOS, we need more musketeers, and we are really an army already. <laughs> so what I want to talk about is mathematics in various sizes, because as we already learned from, from Shirin, this, this is from her project, this is an obelisk from her project, you can't really not see it well with the background. And this is the pyramid. Um, we so can, Eva, yes, just a, a second. So may, maybe you want to share your, um, your slides only because now we see the, the zoom as well with, uh, with the presentation. So may, maybe you can just uh, select sharing the, the, the slides only. I will try my best. I will stop sharing the screen again. Because actually, that's what I thought that I did. Thank you for noting this. Did this help? Uh, we are waiting. <laughs> it's coming. Yeah, whenever I open GeoGebra, it's really hard um, for me sharing the screen. Because for some reason, it overloads my, my graphic card. We need to get you a new computer. I do have a new computer. Just not here. <laughs> OK, so it looks better now. OK, it's, great. And then there is some, some shading, but I think it's good. Hopefully, I can explain what you should see. So my topic is um, to find ways how to teach teachers th about 3D printing and how, how to give them tools, just that she, as Shirin previously said, um, giving them a cookbook and, and tools how to use this. And one of the parts of the cookbook, in my opinion, should be recipes. So basic, basically exercises. Um, and I want to have 
really small and really big exercises to choose from. And what I'm presenting So hopefully we will get back Eva. I think her computer is uh, is crashing. But um, so, is there any comments from uh, anyone about uh, the previous presentation or any anything that you would like to share? And then I'm sure Eva will be back soon. There was a question in the chat still unanswered. Maybe this is a good time from mm -hmm. Irina. Um, she asks, so were these projects part of regular curriculum or extra projects? And uh, it was uh, the, pr the presentation before. Well, she, uh, she did answer that question though. Okay, sorry. So when what we are trying to do here in uh, in Linz, then that we are taking all the, the, the possible technologies and uh, and also uh, looking at connections between the different technologies. So in this kind of physical and digital connections, then so when what we observe that our students uh, and uh, uh, so especially the the younger students is now not taking uh, too much. Uh, difference between the, the physical and digital reality, and then we want to to include many different ways to to, to teach mathematics. So then that's why we, we try to, to look at these uh, new technologies, especially GeoGebra, because GeoGebra is improving to many different directions. So we have uh, been this kind of uh, approach of physical and digital connections, and also we are looking at the, the cultural aspects. So I think Adinur and uh, Shireen and then soon Eva will uh, show that how we, we try to integrate the, the, the different um, cultural uh, aspects of our lives and then also the, the, the culture where the students are living. So one of our PhD students just finished in, in, uh, on Monday looking at memes. Uh, internet memes, and then also we are looking at YouTubers and and many different uh, ways as well. So I think Eva is back, <laughs> and uh, we are I'm looking really, for. I'm really, really sorry. This is very inconvenient. Uh, yeah, Shireen, but, but could we you will be maybe much more happy. The, the slides and I talk <laughs> because then my computer is not crashing. Eva, I can share. Yeah slides and uh, you can say me next and I will turn to next because I'm Thank you. Music, okay yes please just, I think this is this is maybe easier because my yeah. computer just, just completely second. gave up good so Eva we will fix it we are even more happy that you are presenting so great I will make up the time I will be super quick. No, 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 no. I think you just take your time and then Branko will take time. So we are not in the rush. So just ah, use the, the time that my, my was share. allocated. Mm -hmm. Good. Eva, you just yeah, I can see everything. I will be next. Oh, next slide. Thank you, Branko. Um, next. <laughs> yeah, and, and this is a project that I actually did with Branko, which you can see on the top left. And uh, parts of what I'm presenting is also uh, part of a Bridges workshop. So when, uh, if, if you want to be part of that, you can do that then. Please, next. OK, so I'm going to talk about two sizes of math, because what we want to do, or what I'm, my aim is, I want to foster three-dimensional thinking. And I want to foster that people explore mathematical features of things during they do, just as Diego introduced a while ago. Um, and of course, my, my absolute goal is to, to connect virtual things to the real world and also math to the real world and have give back the fun to students because 
in my opi in my opinion and i believe i talk to uh, talk from the heart of many of us math is so much fun and it should be because it enables us to do things and so i um today present a topic for pocket size math in your hand and one for really huge size math and the pocket size math is uh, we worked on a project called Logifaces, which is bricks like this. And it's an Erasmus Plus project, which we did with teachers. And um, the goal is to create an, an exercise book, just as Shirin previously said, uh, a cookbook basically for with containing exercises where um, teachers can learn about um, all sorts of things regarding Logifaces. And the second project is a maze, maze workshop, which we developed for the Ars Electronica Festival last year, which was quite a challenge because of the COVID pandemic. And we had 17, um, 70 testers between five and 70 years of age uh, on three days, on three sunny days. And I'm going to introduce this to you. Please, next. So first, um, Using games for STEAM is already in itself an incentive because it helps raise the awareness of people. It, it, it's already engaging. It's a great motivator. And as we discussed earlier, not everybody has a 3D printer. So um, this is an original block of the Logifaces game. Um, as you can see with the students on, on the top left, we tested the game and tested how a small printed version of the game can be used with children in a summer school with children between nine and 12 years. And we already also created their own. Um, we let them create their own games and let them create their own exercises with logic faces, investigating the mathematical properties. And on the top right, um, you see that you can also use this in GeoGebra and create your own logic faces tile in GeoGebra and use this as an augmented reality version of it. And we used um, paper folding in a workshop too with uh, teachers in Asia with around, I think it was 50 or 70 teachers in Asia where we created um, paper logic faces to have a mixture in the materials, which is the next step we're going to look into. Please next. And then mazes, this is a connection to Shirin. Um, on a lot of architecture, you can find mazes and architectural properties can look like mazes or can be based on properties that mazes have or labyrinths have. And labyrinths and mazes um, are part of our culture since about 4,000 years. So they are really, really, really old and also reflected in, um, in on architecture and in art and on gardens. And there are stories and myths and tales and um, like, like the Minotaur, you know, from the Cretan labyrinth. So solving a maze in itself is, is quite a challenge and, and can be um, very empowering if you do it. And this, so, so we created a workshop um, revolving around this topic. And especially the idea was to switch between representations. So we have a 3D printed version of the logic, uh, uh, no, log not logic faces, of the mazes that people create and an augmented reality version and a paper version. And all of this is on the next slide, please. So the workshop we were developing was first you go to a web page such as labyrinthos.net, which have, they have a quite a, a unique collection of um, information about mazes and labyr labyrinths. And there you can get inspiration and investigate which mathematical properties such as mirroring or, or, or um, actual algorithmic ideas mazes have. And then you can create your own maze based on your own ideas on paper. And afterwards, the idea is to not only stay on the paper, but bring the paper to the, to the um, GeoGebra, um, into the GeoGebra applet. And so adding the dots to GeoGebra is quite a challenge in itself because it means that you have to find out exactly what you want to do. And then you have to connect these dots in GeoGebra in a certain way, one by one, creating 
an object that is two dimensional. And then after creating the object is, that is two dimensional, you can create your own three dimensional object. And um, this three dimensional object, you can use as Julia described earlier in an augmented reality version and you can make it really, really, really big. So this is the big version of math. So you can just really actually step into your own mathematical ideas and you can figure out, okay, how long is this really? Is, is mirroring, is it just confusing from looking, looking at it or is it even more confusing by being in my own object and, and um, solving my own object and this solving idea of the object, this we can do with math here in, 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 in this example. For example, the um, 3D printed version was a five year old uh, explorer from Egypt from our previous speakers uh, with the aid of, of, of Shirin, um, her son was able to create this three-dimensional object. So 3D printing is not only something for 16 year old children, but also for even much younger children. And as far as I remember, she said that afterwards her son started to create um, mazes out of building blocks. So this experience made him realize what mazes are made of and what, what they do and he just took whatever he had in his uh, surrounding, recreating this idea and recreating whatever he did. Please, next slide. Uh, yeah, like I said, you can use this in different um, representations. You can make a token for yourself and you can try to solve it using a pen or, or put it as a necklace, just having it in your hand and, and feeling how, how it feels like because 3D printing gives so many more um, opportunities to math. You, you can have a texture and a weight which you otherwise wouldn't have. And then of course you can make it really, really, really big and go outdoors such as Adi Nur presented previously and use it on your garden lawn or in the parking lot or whatever. Please next slide. So this is what we did at the Ars Electronica Festival. Yes, please click this. I think we will not be able to hear a sound but this is what it looks like from the outside if people walk the, their own mazes. So you can just see people walking around and it's really, really huge and it's really complicated. And they were amazed and had a lot of fun solving it. And this was quite a fun experience because we had to disinfect all the tablets all the time. Yeah, and of course this can be used on mobile phones so you don't have to have a 3D printer using your, your, your mathematical object that you created in three dimensions. Please, next slide. No, no, not that quick. The mm -hmm. most important slide because now, no, no, Sorry. that slide, yes. This is, this is the most important slide of my presentation because now I have the opportunity to introduce Branko um, who is interested and works on STEAM education for visually impaired students, which is a, a topic which I think is extremely important because we should not leave out someone because his, his or her senses are a bit weaker than others. And he's a book author of many, many textbooks and teacher manuals from Montenegro. And of course, for his awesomeness, he received an early career research award this year from, from, from Bera. And as you can see on the picture, he also received the Excep Exceptional Person Award from me um, in Montenegro with a crown. And since, <laughs> since this crowned person will speak next, I give the floor to Branko. Thank you. But before uh, Branko starts, I think uh, congratulations to Eva. And then maybe if there are some questions and then Franco, you look amazing with your ghost uh, shape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I start, or there is some question? I think um, I, I think, think you should start, and then maybe maybe we can uh, have the, the questions to both of you because. Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you, Branko. I'm sure you just again. You can see. I, yeah, it's work. At first, I want to uh, thanks to Eva, and I need to say your 
award worth me more than uh, the previous one which you mentioned and some uh, somewhere i read when you spend a lot of time with people who are excellent uh, slowly but surely you become excellent so because i spend the time from team in linz probably that is the reason why i improve myself also today i uh, speak about some experience when teacher participate or organize some innovation so the title is teachers innovation in uh, action uh, and i will begin uh, uh, in align with uh, the topic of this session uh, as eva say once upon a time uh, where i start my phd a very young uh, phd students uh, i started in small country from balkan which called montenegro and there is only five uh, research in the field uh, in the field of education so i apply for uh, one of scholarship and i arrive in linz school of education and at the beginning i was thinking then totally lost it because i were in field of uh, uh, education of students who are visually impaired and blind mostly in biology and chemistry not uh, so much in math and i was thinking that i'm lost it that is the reason why i uh, put these quotes here sometimes you uh, have to get lost to find yourself actually uh, in Linz in that amazing team which is in this in, in uh, this uh, right picture Professor Jolt, uh, Martin, Eva, Diego and Renata I develop a lot of my idea improve it especially re research question methodology and something similar together with this amazing team and uh, Thanks to their support, we developed one really interesting product, project, which were funded from the side of European Un uh, Union and Council of Europe. Uh, the project uh, was titled Dig "Digital Technology, uh, Technology Teaching Technologies as, as Scaffolding Tools in Inclusive uh, Education," and project lasted uh, one uh, one uh, year. Uh, the main core of our project were to uh, provide the teachers' workshops uh, in uh, using 3D printing as uh, scaffolding tool, the tools in inclusive classroom uh, in aim to trigger collaboration between students dis with disability and students with our disabilities. Uh, we divide our workshop in several, uh, several parts. At first, we uh, provide them uh, information about uh, uh, theoretical part about uh, 3D printing in possibility of uh, their implementation in inclusive classroom. Second part of our workshop were uh, to explain them, which is main part of mechanic mechanical part of 3D printers. After that, uh, we provide them information uh, of software or uh, online platforms which they uh, call or can use in uh, creating their 3D uh, models. And after that, we allow them to explore it uh, by themselves. And of course, uh, print some uh, simple uh, simple model which they create during the uh, during the workshops. Uh, of course, we didn't only provide them information during the workshop. Uh, thanks to Eva and Diego, we developed one uh, uh, page on GeoGebra, which were uh, which called uh, materials for inclusive uh, schools introduction for 3D printing, which were uh, provided all uh, necessary information for. Uh, uh, for a teacher who uh, who are beginning uh, beginners in uh, uh, using 3D uh, 3D printing in school. Uh, also, there is rise one question: uh, if there is no sense to provide them workshops only, so every uh, school uh, was, uh, was equipment with one 3D printer, which were by from budget of the of the project. Uh, we invite the teacher. Uh, at the teachers after the workshops to implement this in their inclusive classroom and send that, uh, uh, to us some uh, examples. We didn't force them to include it in specific subject in, or in specific area or connect it uh, with uh, school activity. We, we gave them totally freedom and just ask them to provide to us some examples. And I want today actually mainly present uh, three of them, which were really fascinating. Uh, this was this example were created uh, from side of the uh, pupils, uh, peers of students which uh, were totally blind, and of course uh, observed by their uh, teachers. That is, this is uh, bli uh, braille uh, pattern dots. Uh, the, uh, these pillars uh, could be moved and uh, create different different letters from uh, from. Uh, 
uh, Braille uh, alphabet. So uh, this is created from uh, teachers uh, uh, from the side of students and teacher in second grade in Montenegro. That is the students from uh, which is old uh, eight eight years. Uh, old and it was implemented in, the, in the, uh, learning the, uh, that uh, blind students uh, letter from alphabet reading as well in writing because when he uh, learns some of the letter using these uh, pillars he can also write different uh, different different uh, different uh, letters. Uh, this uh, this is uh, one uh, second example. Uh, it, it is created from uh, side of uh, as well students and uh, teachers. Uh, it dedicated from uh, their peers, uh, which have some physical uh, disability, and he is not able to uh, control the pencil during the uh, writing the letters. So they create this uh, really uh, simple but really fascinating uh, model. So this. Uh, he put the pencil in these uh, holes, and he uh, that uh, made him able to write different uh, different letters, different words, and uh, different uh, sentence uh, as well. This is also the same years as uh, the students uh, uh, from the previous, because they uh, learn in second grade uh, of primary school to write and. Uh, uh, and read. Uh, uh, this is a uh, characteristical, uh, characteristical letter which is used in Montenegro, which is called, uh, called uh, uh, Cirilica. Uh, this is one uh, tangible tangible uh, cell. Uh, this is created from a little bit older uh, students uh, as, as well in primary school because students from uh, 6 to uh, 15 years in Montenegro, that's all uh, in one school which called primary school and after that we have three or four years secondary school. So this is uh, students 15 years old. They create uh, uh, tangible cells for also visually impaired uh, students. This is uh, all part which can be moved and uh, removed in these holes and create uh, these cells. This was a really one interested uh, project because uh, this teacher have a really interesting approach. He didn't uh, not only include uh, T uh, students with disability. He also include uh, the students from disadvantaged family and students from vulnerable group uh, group in this uh, project uh, in different phases of the of the project. So it was really interesting uh, to see how, for example, students which uh, who doesn't have uh, access to digital technology participate in this project uh, uh, in different parts, for example, in painting, in creating it uh, on uh, uh, software and something something like it. There were more, of course, uh, examples, but this was a uh, highlight of, of uh, the, the results. Uh, of course, uh, uh, we during the workshops and uh, this uh, teacher's lesson, we asked them to record video and audio uh, record uh, record it, and uh, we have a plans to turn all this information in uh, future uh, future papers, which are uh, prepared on and submitted, or will be submitted in in future uh, future time. One more of, uh, one more time, I want to thank all team from uh, from Linz who teach me. Uh, who teach me uh, everything about digital technology, especially 3D printing, Eva, Diego, uh, Professor Jolt, of course, and all, uh, all amazing uh, team there. And I hope we will write a lot of paper and write happily every after. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Branko. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so maybe maybe, maybe maybe I should add to to the award list of Branko that Branko is joining us next week as a postdoc for the the upcoming years. So it's very good to have uh, Branko back in the team. So he just finished his PhD and now back soon. Thank you very much. I'm happy to be part of your team in Linz. I can wait to be there. Thank you also for, for working on this topic, because like I said, I think this is especially mathematics is especially challenging maybe for blind students because it's all working in your head. And if you don't have any tangible idea about what you're working on, it's really probably very hard to understand what the concepts are. So I think 
having something in your hand, really actually feeling something, how, how, how math feels is important. I guess it's also interesting. Uh, sometimes uh, we, person who doesn't have any problem with uh, eyes, we sometimes doesn't feel the subject the same with, uh, as a person who uh, mostly feel it with uh, uh, touching or hearing it. So it was uh, also very interesting to uh, observe uh, things from their perspective. So it was really, really, really amazing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then and we are planning to do many of these connections with, uh, with uh, blind students in different topics. And then we will have some new students working on this with, uh, with Branko, so. Yeah, and, and um, are there more questions to Branko? If not, then maybe we should proceed because I'm afraid I screwed up the timeline with my mishap a bit. So we are 10 minutes over the schedule. Um, we will now finish with math puzzles from colleagues from Diego. Um, Anjura, are you here? You should be here. It's your, it's your turn now, you have the floor. Please amaze us with puzzles and, and give us joy with puzzles. <laughs> Hi, Emma. How, uh, okay, I can share the screen. Just two minutes. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Is everything? Okay? We can hear you clearly, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, my name is Aniura, this is my name here. Uh, the, the subject that I, I will show you in this workshop is also, uh, uh, it has to some other uh, authors that are, that are Leandro Rodriguez Araujo, who is, uh, his name is here, and Lorenzo Albala Lip. Leandro is a math teacher and Lorenzo is a high school student. I work at the math mathematics department at the Federal University of Minas Gerais. This is the logo of our university. And this project, uh, the, the project that uh, has that has this site with math uh, puzzles, the name is exactly math puzzles, Quebra uh, Cabezas y Matemática in Portuguese. This project is uh, an outreach project of our university and is also supported by uh, OBMEP, that is an abbreviation for Brazilian Mathematics Olympiad Program in Public Schools. This is the logo of, of this other project. And this uh, picture is a picture of the GeoGebra book of our uh, GeoGebra site of our project. Uh, so, the site that we maintain contains several math puzzles and some other complementary material that are designed to be used face-to-face -face by math teachers or any other interested person with primary school children from 8 to 12 years old. But uh, because of the COVID pandemic, face-to-face -face interactions are not possible so uh, last year we began to adapt some of the activities to the online setting using GeoGebra. And in this uh, workshop, we will go through some of these activities. Uh, so uh, I think we can begin. I don't know how did you uh, organize it, 
you can feel free to interrupt us at any time if you have any questions or doubts. Okay, okay. thank you. So uh, the structure of the workshop, we thought the following. First, we will send you a GeoGebra link. Uh, it's a link to one activity. Then you have some, ta some time to complete the activity. After that, you, if you uh, want, get, we can discuss some ideas or have any comments. And finally, I will explain you I will show you where the puzzle, uh, the ori original puzzle came from. Uh, I think it's very interesting because the sources are very different. Uh, so our first activity is this, the name is Dragon Spell. This is the link. Uh, I can, sorry. Yes. Can you post this to, ah, yes, thank you. Thank you, Leandro. Leandro Post. Leandro is a great help. Um, so I can maybe I can change to sharing here. Now you're seeing my Yojava site or not? I we still see the presentation. Yes, I should change something here. But I don't know how to change it. Mm. Maybe if you stop sharing the screen and then start sharing it again, but with the other screen that you want to show. Yes. Now you can see the screen with the... Now we see it, yes. Thank you. Okay. So this is... Uh, this are you, right? Uh, yes, yeah, we are... We will have some minutes with the activity. If you have some sound to hear, it's very nice because activity has some sounding effect. It's very interesting. So you. Yes, uh, some people experiencing the activity. If anybody has a question, please feel free to to ask. There is somebody here, student eight, that complete the activities, student seven also, very nice. Let us see here. Student five. This is an interesting activity because if you like dragons better than owls, maybe you don't want to complete the activity, right? But the objective is to come back to the owl.
equals to nine twenty four also completed the activity. Miracul wants to know um, what, how to submit the task and whether you can see this. And submit? Catherine loves it, but she's, she's challenged. <laughs> I don't, I didn't understand how to submit in... I think um, he wants to know how to, how you know that we solved, but you can see our progress, right? Yes. Uh, mm. I thought that I was sharing that, but my share uh, screen is showing what you are doing, right or not? Yes, we can see that some of us really like heads and some of us really like owls, maybe not as much as dragons. Yes, this is a possibility of the Yojura classroom that is very nice to use in this online setting that we are, at least here in Brazil, we will have this online setting for some time still. Uh, teachers of the person who is leading the activity can see what the students are making and it's very nice that there is an option to hide the name of the students, the names, because if you are showing, it's not fine to show the, the name, the names of the persons. Uh, so there are many people that completed the activities. The activity, maybe we can come back to, to make some additional comments. What do you think? I love this activity. I can keep repeating it several times, but we have some other... Yeah, activities. but once that you figured it out, then you know, right? I didn't understand, sorry. Um, I think that once that you know that, that you know how to solve it, then it does not change, right? So it always stays the same. So when you know how to solve it, then it's solved. It depends. Uh, when I, uh, this activity, we have used it with face-to-face uh, -face math fairs. And mm -hmm. there is some kind of little children that, I mean, uh, not only little children, but it, it's not very intuitive that this dragon stay alive even with, without heads if <laughs> it has, if he has some tail. And uh, sometimes, sometimes when I, I speak with the people attending these fairs, I, I use different ways to, to explain the activity, to solve the activity in order to, to show them that even if it is not intuitive, uh, it is a rule that we have to, to follow. Mm -hmm. And anyway, this is a, a kind of, of difficulty, I think. You just I, said I, you used it at the fair, right? Yes, at several fairs. We have used it for many years. Irina wants to know uh, whether you used it with children there and whether they produced different strategies to solve the, the, the problem. The strategy is more or less the same. Uh, there is that difficulty that I mentioned about the, because uh, I don't know, uh, maybe there is some animal that stay alive without head. Uh, <laughs> it, it might exist, but it is not much uh, 
frequent, right? So uh, when when a, a, a child uh, cut off uh, all the heads, uh, normally he, he thinks that uh, the the transformation must be fulfilled, but it is not. And this is something. Uh, in fact, we I. I try to explain this before they they begin to, to solve the activity. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome wonders how you um, do how to deal with frustration. He thinks that sometimes <laughs> the students will maybe feel frustrated and then they might tr stop trying. No, they they don't think why because this is like a, a little game we we have some dragon pieces that that may uh, are then made of uh, pieces of paper with some protection and they like the pieces so they uh, i think they they consider that like a game and finally if they don't understand something uh, i or other person explain a, a little detail that they don't they didn't understand and there is no much sadness with this activity i i think it's very very appealing i i don't know why maybe it's something very different right uh, because normally dragons mm -hmm. uh, don't appear in in math classes or activities and they like it very much. So I haven't seen any frustration at all. Okay. Never. Okay. Um, Diego and Vincent, they go on um, how the Conrad's page could be the, the untransform could be the, the restart and the Conrad's page could be not untransform, but just congratulations. And then Diego wonders about the strategy and Catherine wants to link. So the, yeah, I will collect the, the link as well um, if I'm shared it and then I can put it also on GeoGebra on the page. Thank, yes, you. Thank uh, you, Leandro. So maybe- I think everyone can... is very intrigued. <laughs> Can come back to the to the presentation. Yeah, what do you think? So I will I will come back if you if you want to keep here. It's okay. So let me come back here to my presentation. I should find it. Okay. So. Uh, maybe you you identified some uh, important ideas to to fulfill the activity uh, that are the following. Uh, for example, to undo this spell, the the dragon should have no tails and an even number of heads because this way you can cut off. Uh, pairs of heads and finally you undo this step, right? The total number is not important. How many heads do you have? The dragon has, but it has to be an even number. Um, second, how, uh, how do I get to this position, to this configuration, even an even number of heads? I can do it if I had, if the dragon had uh, two tails and an odd number of heads, I would chop off the tails so a new head uh, will grow and then I will have an even number of heads. I will be in this configuration and okay, I can undo the spell. And um, one last of observation is the following. In this case, I won't be able to undo the spell. So if the dragon had no tail, no tails and an odd number of heads, uh, the old won't be back because there is no way to, to undo the spell. This, with these three uh, ideas, 
I think it's every everybody can can undo the spell. So in the math fairs, we tried in general, not only with this activity, but in general, we ha we tried to develop this kind of of observations so that you you don't uh, you don't uh, you don't say exactly the, the solution, but you, you give the, the attending people the clues that will uh, allow them to, to solve the, the challenges, the, the puzzles, right? And I think this is the main three ideas that, that are important in this uh, puzzle, right? Uh, so, uh, where the puzzle came from. This is the, the picture of our site where we maintain uh, several math puzzles. The, the link is here. We will uh, send you the, the presentation so you, you will have all these informations. This part here has links to several complementary materials. This is only, these are uh, PDF archives, PDF files. So this is a file, a PDF file that contains the statement of the problem. This is all in Portuguese because we speak Portuguese. So uh, everything here has to be in Portuguese. This is statement, solution, a discussion about the solution. This is a link to the activity uh, that was implemented in GeoGebra. This is uh, a file with special observations specific for math teachers. This is a file that contains some hints to, to make uh, materials to, to, to use this uh, activity in a math fair. And that's all, this is, all the, uh, here you have all the, the, the files together, right? And the original uh, activity, I found it in a book that was prepared by these people here. This is the, the main picture of the website of a, a foundation that maintains this, uh, this kind of uh, this, uh, it, it, this has many, many resources to organize. They foster the organization of uh, math fairs. So they have some guidelines here and uh, the links to many, many puzzles. And it's very, very nice. Uh, I think th this is a, a, a very interesting uh, website. And the, the, the same activity you can find also in this other website. This is a, a, a similar project, galileo.org. Maybe you know, you know the, the project. Uh, but I wanted to show some uh, little difference between this statement and the statement that we used because uh, in this statement, the dragon must be killed and with a special uh, sword, the, I, where's the sword, the knowledge sword or something like this. But we found this, this context and this statement a little <laughs> strong for little children. So that's why we invented that a story about the, the witch and the old and the unspelling problem uh, in order to, to not to have so much violence in the, in the statement. But the original statement is this, you have to kill the dragon with some special sword and, and so. So this is the, these are the sources and now we have to, we can change now uh, to the other activity. This is mm -hmm. the chameleon game. The link is this here. Maybe Leandro can send you a link. I will change my 
sharing. Do this. So, uh, now I think you can see the, the screen with the activities, right? Yes. Okay. And we also already have the link. Yes, fine. So this is uh, an activity with a chameleon, you know, uh, chameleons change the color of the skin when they walk on color surfaces. So this chameleon is not different, right? One important thing here that we have observed in, your, in ourselves is that it's not so easy to, to read carefully the statement of the problem before you begin to, to, to try the activity. Uh, I mean, I, the activity is, has some kind of uh, graphic appeal and I think it is so uh, attractive that you, you, you want to try the activity even if you don't know yet the, the statement of the problem. It happens to me many times and I think it's, I don't know if we can avoid it. So, Great. So I think we need to finish um, then the session soon. So it's uh, it's very impressive, and then it would be very good to to share. And then I think there is lots of things in common, on what we are doing. So thank you very much for sharing with us. And then I think we will continue on this later. Okay. So we will share all the, the, the material, so Maybe very impressive. Maybe it's better to, to send the presentation or something? Yes. OK. I collected all the links that were posted about all the games. I hope the ones that I caught in the GeoGebra book. So um, they are saved, and they, ca they can be revisited and, and played again. Okay, okay. So I will, I will go through the presentation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. This is so amazing and so much fun. Thank you, Leandro. Perfect. Oh. Thank you. There's one more. Tiles in the kitchen. Yes, we have four, but I, I think there's no time, right? Um, I think. Um... One that we um, we should uh, finish and then the, the session and then I think we will organize some sessions um, later to to share all of these games. So maybe we can take some notes that uh, we should organize a, a smaller conference that for for people who are uh, interested in in developing games and and, and this kind of version. So I think. And we should so because uh, if we continue, I think it will um, be a very long time, and I think it's be it's better for us to 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 organize sessions, which is uh, which is very focused, like we did in February for three D printing, and I think we will have some specialized conferences, and then we will be able to share more in in the bigger audience as well. Okay. So, so I will thank start you very much. Here. Yes. So, um, yeah, so we will have a, a game conference, it looks like. So we will have an arts conference in January, and then we will have a game conference too. So, and uh, and then some theories with Hassan 
as well. So I think uh, we will have uh, some smaller sessions. Okay. So thank you very much for everyone. And thanks a lot for Eva and Branko and Susanna, Petra and um, Martin, all of the, the organizing team and then for all of the, the presenters and for the hardcore who stayed here. <laughs> so thank you so much for uh, contributing and then we will continue tomorrow and Friday. So there will be really interesting uh, sessions. So thank you very much. Eva, do you want to say something or? Thank you very much for, for, for all your attendance and for the great presentations and especially for the games, which will probably keep me awake this night. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, thank you for, for all your questions and the, the discussions and for your patience. You're amazing. And I hope that this contributes to uh, our spirit tomorrow. And somehow hmm. Branko is not a ghost anymore. Oh, what's happened, Branko? <laughs> Your computer I just got, got repaired. Sometimes put me like in ghost mode, but sometimes is in regular mode. It's a, it depends. <laughs> so yeah. now it's a half, half ghost. Yes, now it's about <laughs> to be ghost again, yeah. So thank you very much for everyone again. Have a good evening. Have a good day wherever you are in the, the world. And uh, thanks for the, the team. And uh, we will continue. And then we are very happy to collaborate with all of you. So hopefully you can uh, contribute more. Come to visit us. And then hopefully you will meet in person, not only uh, online. So thank you very much. And see you tomorrow, hopefully. And many, 